three, two, one. We are live and welcome, 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 welcome. What does your audience actually hate about your content? Actually, there's a couple of things that they probably, you know, if I'm checking with everybody about what they hate about content out there today, they're going to tell me these three things that I'm going to share with you. And then I'm going to share with you three things that'll help your prospects fall in love with you and your content. So welcome today. If you are here live, you know the drill, hashtag live and hashtag replay. You see, the thing is that content is what drives clients to purchase something from you. Content is a huge part of your marketing. And um, we need to know what is resonating with our clients and what is not. So I'm wondering in the comments below, who is producing regular content? Who is out there and, you know, regular content? Maybe once a week you're on Facebook or twice a week you're on LinkedIn. So I'd love to know where you are, uh, where you are posting content and how often you actually do that. Because it's really important to know this so that you can increase that frequency. So let's hear from those of you who are here today and I'm just gonna check my notes. And all right, yes, so we're talking about content and what your readers, your audience actually might hate about your content. Now I know hate is a strong word, right? But it's true, right? Um, and these are things that uh, you are going to want to avoid. Um, and these are what we call universally disliked. So maybe you can write that in the comments. Universally disliked. And the first thing that I'm going to share with you today is about, believe it or not, it's not about the picture if you're doing Facebook Lives uh, or if you're doing videos. It's not about how great you look. It is the number one thing that your audience will dislike strongly is if you have horrible, horrible audio. So audio is the number one thing to be focused on. So that means that, you did, well, first of all, it doesn't mean that you have to go out and purchase a very expensive um, you know, like a podcast mic or anything like that. It just means that you have to be aware of the audio that you do have. Is your computer microphone good enough? Or do you have to put some earbuds in? You have to be aware of what your audio is like. You see, because you can have the best camera, you can have the best lighting, but if you have an echo or if you have distracting noise in the background, maybe a hum, that's happened to me before. You know, my computer overheated and I got this mm in the background, totally screwed up everything. So you've got to really be careful. You've got to have that high quality audio. So the first thing that your audience dislikes about your content whether it's on Facebook Live, whether it's on video, is about the audio. So just remember, you don't have to look perfect. You just have to sound really darn good. Okay? Hashtag darn good. All right. The second thing that your audience um, really doesn't like is inconsistency. You see, your audience loves to know that you are the type of person that they can count on, that they can count on and that you're going to be there for them. So how can you, you know, create, how can you map out some consistency? Um, you know, in this Facebook group, I go live every Thursday at one o'clock. It's consistent. Whether you show up or somebody else shows up, I'm here, I'm doing my jam, it doesn't matter. But the people in the group know that they can count on 
that I am here. Because if you don't show up consistently, guess what happens? They follow someone else or they drift away, right? They drift away. So the number one thing that your audience dislikes about your content was the audio. Number two is about inconsistency. So this is why it's really important to map it out and to know where you are heading. Now, the third thing that they dislike about your content is what a friend of mine characterized as lack of empathy. How can I explain this? Lack of empathy means that it's not all about you. It's not about, you know, I'm the greatest marketing guru out there. I'm the greatest, whatever it happens to be. This is what you need to learn from me. It's not about me. It's all about that you show empathy, that you understand your audience's situation, right? You've got to put yourself in their shoes. So you're putting yourself in their shoes, understanding their problems. You know them better than they actually know themselves. And if you're not adding in this empathy, this uh, quality into your content, you're missing the boat. And that is when people start to turn off, right? You know, these people that you go, can go to their Facebook pages, whether it's personal or whether it's um, their business page. And it's only about selfies about themselves. That is only about them. Now, I know if you're watching this, whether it's hashtag live or hashtag replay, that it for you, it's not about you. It's about how can you serve your audience to the best. So those are the three things, and I'll summarize them again. It's all about the audio, right? It's all about being consistent, and it's all about showing empathy. So let's shift away from what your audience dislikes to what your audience really will appreciate in your content. And this I know to be true. I, um, you know, I've been a guest on a number of blogs, uh, podcasts, that type of thing. And I know that what people really, really appreciate are takeaways. So your audience will love if they have something immediate that they can take away and implement, right? So what can they do today? So for instance, I've given you three things that your audience dislikes. You can check your microphone right away to see if your audio is good quality. You can check to see if you have consistency. And if you don't, how can you approve your consistency? And number three was lack of empathy. How can you shift the story that you're telling to show that you understand them? Those are implementable, implement. <laughs> Those are things you can do right away, right? So solid takeaways. Pe that's what people really love. And if you are giving them solid takeaways, they are going to follow you. They are going to benefit and they are going to love, love, love you. So that is the first thing that your audience is going to love about your content. Okay. The second thing they're going to love about your content is when you reveal parts of yourself. So this is when you reveal your vulnerability, your authenticity, your maybe even your quirkiness, right? So every time I write my blog or every time I do a video, there is usually something about how I have done and made a mess of whatever I'm teaching, right? Because what we learn from our messes, we learn from our mistakes, uh, we learn from all of those things. So can you share some of those stories in your content? What you have learned from those mistakes um, and those, and that really shows the authenticity, right? People will come back because you are you. And if you share some authenticity, some vulnerability, they will relate to you. Um, 
And it's true. You know, there are people out there who constantly swear, for instance. Let's take that. Now, not everybody is going to love them, but some people will. And I've been known to drop an F-bomb here or there. But that is me. I am not perfect. I am not whatever. I'm not liked by everybody. And I embrace that. So embrace who you are and be who you are. You notice I'm using my hands. That's me, right? Or I'm using my flip chart. I'm not using some fancy technology. That is me. So the vulnerability and the authenticity. So be human, not perfect, just be you, okay? So things that people love about content are solid takeaways, reveal parts of yourself, and number three, drum roll please, this is providing a mix of, remember I said in what they hate is they hate inconsistency, right? So they love predictability, but they also like a little bit of a surprise sometimes. So there is a difference between being inconsistent and being, um, you know, surprising people with something. So let's say that um, you know that every Tuesday, Thursday at one o'clock, I do this training. Well, if one day I showed up and I interviewed somebody, that might be a little bit of a surprise. Or if one day I did this from my boat, that might be a little bit of a surprise, right? So how can you throw in a little bit of that uh, surprise factor into your content, right? Um, yeah, maybe you talk about a, the ducks or maybe you talk about the dog your dog or your garden. The other day, a friend of mine, Steve Lowell, um, had an accident and he was, he doesn't wear glasses now because he's had eye surgery, uh, but he was inflating a fishing boat. Anyway, we won't go there. And he had some rods and stuff and somehow, somehow he poked a rod in his eye, tremendous pain, could see the whole bit. This was on the weekend. His surprise was that he actually showed up on Tuesday to do his training. But he talked about how being blinded allowed him to see some different things. Totally, I mean, being vulnerable and totally unpredictable, yet he was consistent, right? So there are some things that you can do that are going to jazz things up a little bit. All right, so I have shared with you the three things your audience hates and the three things your audience probably loves. But my question to you is what kind of content are you actually putting out there? What kind of content are your peeps, your audience, your perfect fit clients finding so that they get to know and love you before you actually get to sell to them? Well, if you've been following me for any length of time, you know I've been talking a lot about Facebook Lives, right? And next week, we start the five-day client-getting Facebook Live Masterclass. And um, the thing about that Masterclass is it uh, we do fun things. So if you are watching and you have already done this masterclass with me, maybe you would make a comment. Um, but we do some fun things that get you over that hump of being afraid of going live. And there's lots of things in there. It's jam-packed, five days. And you see, the thing is about Facebook Lives gets you so much more visibility and so much more organic reach. Now I can also, I'm doing Facebook Live here in my group right now. And I can also do Facebook Live on my personal page. But we're going to talk about business Facebook Lives and how you can ramp that up. And here's how you register. You go to dianalidstone.com slash shop slash live. So June 7th to the 11th 
every day at noon. I will be live in a secret Facebook group. There will be a workbook, there will be prizes, and every day you get to implement so that you can take your Facebook lives to the next level so that you can get more eyeballs on your content, you can get comfortable being uncomfortable, and you can create content that your audience loves. That's what I want for you because ultimately, I want you to get the clients that you love so you can earn the income you want, so you can have the freedom and the joy that you want. Thanks for watching. I know you're there, even if you've been quiet today but I truly appreciate you showing up. Take care. Bye for now. See you next Thursday.